time we stopped at one of the prescribed punishment and if you recall that the prescribed punishments have variable have different types and one of them is the sin of fornication or adultery and for this sin there is the punishment of either flogging or stoning as you remember inshallah and we said that in order to prove th such a crime we need either a confession or the testimony of four adult Muslim men now if this condition is not fulfilled so if there were a hundred women or three men and two or three or five or ten women or there were three Muslim men and ten non-Muslim men etc in this case the punishment of zina is not implemented however those who came forward to testify without fulfilling the conditions of being a witness over such a, a crime their punishment is to be flogged and this false accusation in Islam is called Al-Qadhf and Qadhf linguistically means to throw so if I have something and I throw it this is called Qadhf and nowadays it is understood whenever you use this word that you mean slandering which is accusing someone of adultery of fornication and even of sodomy and the prohibition of this is crystal clear in the Quran and in the Sunnah and in the consensus of scholars of Islam Allah says and those who accuse chaste women and then do not produce four witnesses lash them with 80 lashes and do not accept from them testimony ever after and those are definitely disobedient so this crime refers as stated to any accusation of adultery fornication or sodomy what about if the woman was not chaste she's known to be a play woman and the man is known to be a playboy the ruling is the same and the scholars say using the word chaste women this is the norm which means that usually this is what makes it a major sin that people would slander chaste women without having proof to prove it and Allah Azza wa Jal says also in the Quran indeed those who falsely accuse chaste unaware and believing women are cursed in this world and the hereafter and they will have great punishment so this is not specifically for women it also applies for those who falsely accuse men as well in the hadith of Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam avoid the seven major sins and this hadith is why a lot of the Muslims think that major sins are limited only in seven and this is not true the Prophet 
ordered us to avoid the seven sins. And he did not say there are no major sins except these sins. And this is the way of the Quran. This is the way of the Prophet ﷺ to highlight the gravity of certain sins, which does not necessarily mean that other sins are lesser in gravity. What is the punishment for false accusation? Allah Azza wa Jal prescribed this punishment by stating that it should be or that person who slanders an innocent individual must be flogged 80 lashes and he's considered to be a fasiq a transgressor thirdly that his testimony would be rejected and he would be disqualified as a witness. Allah says in the Quran, and those who cause or those who accuse chaste women and then do not produce for witnesses, number one, flog them with 80 lashes. Number two, do not accept from them testimony ever after. And number three, those are definitely disobedient, transgressors. If such a person repents, then Allah Azza wa Jal is most forgiving. And in this sin of slandering, there are two rights. The right of Allah Azza wa Jal and the right of the individual I had slandered. So if I was flogged, then the right of the individual has been taken care of. As for the right of Allah Azza wa Jal, if I repent and I explain my transgression and I confess of the falsehood of my accusation while expressing regret, then Allah accepts my repentance. Allah says, Ex accepted are those who afterwards repent and make amends. For Allah is much forgiving, ever merciful. And this is, alhamdulillah, one of Allah's favors and blessings upon us. So what are the prescribed um, uh, punishment of flogging 80 lashes. What are the reasons, justifications for that? In the book, you would find number one, protecting the society. So this is to protect people from others coming and slandering them. Simple as that. Number two, safeguarding people's honor. I have my reputation to protect. I have my honor. When you come and accuse me of doing something that I had not done and you fail to produce evidences, then you have to be punished for that because you have transgressed against my honor and reputation. Number three, putting an end to evil talk. And this is something that whenever you visit friends and relatives, this type of gossip, of slandering, of idle talk prevail in such gatherings. So Islam puts a punishment for that. So it ensures that no one falls in such a heinous sin. And finally, ensuring that indecency continues to be held as repugnant or repugnant yeah which is something that is disliked abhorred in a muslim society so indecency is not endorsed in islam and such accusations of innocent people must end 
You remember when the Prophet ﷺ gave and delivered the final ceremony in the farewell Hajj? What did he say? Inna amwalakum, wa dima'akum, wa a'radakum, haramun alaykum ka hurmati yawmikum hadha, fi shahrikum hadha, fi baladikum hadha. Verily, your wealth, your blood, meaning not to be shed, not to be killed, not to be injured, and your reputation, your honor, are haram upon one another. Exactly like the sacredness of this day, the day of Arafah, or the day of Eid, in this month, the sacred month of the Hijjah, in these lands, in Mecca or in Arafat, in Al Haram area, in the sanctuary of Al Haram. So, this is something that is well known in Islam to be highly respected and to be highly protected. So, these are two major sins and their prescribed punishment. Fornication and adultery, number one. Number two, slandering. 